often overlooked in the heart of American history, a dark chapter remains hidden for many. American Indian boarding schools, institutions that aimed to assimilate Native children into mainstream settler American culture, have left a profound and lasting impact on Native people still to this day. For centuries, really thousands of years, Native people thrived in diverse cultures, traditions, and languages across what is now known as the United States. But beginning in the 19th and 20th centuries, the U.S. government initiated a policy to forcibly assimilate Native children into settler society. This policy led to the establishment of American Indian boarding schools, where a majority of Native children were forcibly taken from their families and nations. In these schools, of which NABS has identified over 500 institutions, Children were subjected to harsh conditions, cultural suppression and abuse. They were forbidden from speaking their native languages or practicing their traditions. Generations of native children were deprived of their connection to their culture, tradition, land, and identity. It was stolen from them. A similar context was seen in Canada with the Indian residential school system that included nearly 150 institutions and an estimated 150,000 children. In 2008, Canada initiated an historic Truth and Reconciliation Commission, compiled testimony from residential school survivors, centralized archival resources, and produced a series of 94 calls to action. To this date, the United States government has yet to walk this path or identify how many students were impacted. Though, since its formation, NABS has called for such a commission addressing the impacts of the U.S. Indian boarding school policy. Even when students were told they can go home, this wasn't the case for many. In this letter in 1910, a parent requested that the Chamawa Indian School send their son home for the summer. Dear Sir, my son Tom wants to come up here this summer, and for my part, I would like very much to see him come. And if you are willing to let him come, please write and let me know how much money to send for fare and expenses and oblige. Yours truly, Thomas Cox. The superintendent replied, Dear Sir, in reply to your letter asking if Tom Cox may go home this summer, I would advise you that I cannot comply with your request, as Tom recently attempted to run away from the school. I think you will readily see that as a matter of discipline for him, and as an example for the other boys, it would be poor policy to grant him any special privileges. Tom is well, and I really think it will be better for him to spend his vacation here. Very respectfully, Superintendent. The impact of these schools continues to be felt today, as they have left a lasting legacy on Native people. Native nations are now faced with the challenge of culture and language revitalization, addressing intergenerational trauma, in addition to already pressing issues in Indian country. This trauma, brought on by boarding schools, has been passed down through generations, contributing to high rates of substance abuse, mental health issues, and cultural loss. Despite these challenges, Native nations are resilient. We are actively working to revitalize our cultures and languages, heal from intergenerational trauma, and seek truth, justice, and healing. Educators, community leaders, parents, and families are at the forefront of these efforts, ensuring that the wisdom and traditions of our ancestors continue to thrive. As we reflect on the legacy of American Indian boarding schools, we must acknowledge the strength and resilience of Native nations in the ongoing journey toward healing and the preservation of our cultures and identities. Lasso Kamati, Iwan Timoitaske.